welcome to another video here in, in Thailand and this one we are down in the deep south near the Malaysian border. Now it's been hard work to get here, uh, it took us an 8 hour drive, we've had to hire a car but I have come down to Nerathiwat just because there are some outstanding snakes down here and there is one stretch of road that I just could not come to Thailand and not give it a go. So although it's been it's been tough to get here, we've only got two nights, I just want to give it a go. I owe Beth a lot of touristy stuff after this, because it is a bit of a trek. But we could get red-headed crates, we could get blue coral snakes, Jurassic Sumatranus is down here, we still have a temple viper there down here. Um, there's where it's vipers, that, yeah, there's loads of cool stuff down here. So we might not get much, but I'm just going to give it a go and we might get a showstopper. But yeah, let's see how we do. Well, we've just had a, a little bit of rain right before nightfall, which is perfect. I'd, I'd actually like a little bit more. You can see I'm in pristine habitat right now. This is exactly what I was hoping to find. I have no idea what I'm doing or where I'm going down here. I'm in proper sort of pioneering mode at the moment. There are people that herb down here with, with great results, um, but I haven't messaged them. They'll, they'll have their own trails and stuff. They want to keep that quiet, that's fair enough. But I am feeling pretty confident about what we've decided to do here tonight. Unsurprisingly, we didn't find any snakes in daylight hours, but I just used this time to get the lay of the land and assess which stretches I thought maybe worth spending more time on than others. Then, once night fell, I could begin cruising this road in search of snakes, and I found my confidence was well placed, as it wasn't long before we turned up a snake. Well, first snake we've got on the road is a pretty cool one. This is the dark-headed cat snake, where you can dig with sets. And you might think I'm being a bit of a pansy, using a hook. Um, but this snake, out of all the Borrega species, is actually the one I've heard has the worst bite. So I'm just going to be a little bit careful with it. Because it is a Borrega, it's a very arboreal snake, so it's long, it's slender in nature has a very prehensile tail and this is an adult um, so they go slightly less red I believe as they mature and they get a really green head which this one isn't super vivid but it's nice and this is the first snake the first species the first snake of this species that I've ever found um, so that's a great start to the night and it's a great start to the road cruise I'm just going to do a bit of footage where you can actually see this snake because we're probably blowing it out in this light um, but yeah, that's a really good start. Well, I just thought I'd show a little bit more of this snake as it sits nicely because it is showing some really nice colours. And then we'll pop it back. You can see how the green in the head drops away to an orangey red colour. And some people I think do call it the red cat snake, but the common name I know is the black headed cat snake, Boega nigriceps. Let's get this one back. Like the last video, I'm including some photos to give a clearer view in case the footage is a bit shaky to try and do these snakes justice. Just got the first green pit viper of the evening. And that is a juvenile Hagen's pit viper. But I'm not actually 100% yet, I'm just going to have a bit of a closer look at this snake. Hagen's pit vipers are one of the larger members of the Trimerosaurus genus, and in Thailand they only occur in the deep south of the country. Unlike a lot of Tremerosaurus, Hagen's pit vipers lay eggs and so are oviparous, just like the Sumatran pit viper which also occurs down here. Both Hagen's and Sumatran pit vipers used to be members of the Paraeus genus, however now they have both been grouped within Tremerosaurus. Having never seen one of these snakes before, I wasn't initially certain of the ID, but once I could see the whitey orange spots down the flank of the snake, I could tell it wasn't Sumatranus and was in fact my first Hagen's pit viper. Yeah, we're just going to let this snake go now, and always remember when you find a snake on the road, make sure you take it off the road and put it in the direction it was going. So if you put it in the direction it's come from, it will know where it is and it will try and recross the road. So we're going to take it off this side, which is not the way he's trying to go, and then we'll leave him be. That was the last footage I got of this snake, but hopefully these pictures that I've inserted show it a bit clearer, because green tree vipers tend to really blow out in torchlight. Hopefully you can see this in the camera, what we've got here... Is a foam nest building frog and it's just making its foam nest set right over the top of this uh, little waterway by the side of the road and the idea is the tadpoles form in the foam like the spawn will be laid into the foam and they can then drop when they're ready into the water below 
Now I often see the frogs and I often see the foam nest but very rarely do you actually see one making it so that's really cool. Well you can actually see some of the tadpoles in there but there's also these guys which are some form of nymph and I suspect predate on the tadpoles. So a bit of a food chain going on there. I just would like the thing that predates on the frogs. We kept making passes of the road and soon we encountered what, in my opinion, was the best snake of the night. Well, what we've got here is an adult Tremerosaurus hagenai on the road. This is a big one. It looks like a big female. Um, this is the larger version of just the juvenile that I found earlier. So this has picked the night up a bit. And that is just a ridiculous find. That, that's fantastic to find that on the road. So let's get some quick shots. Wow, look at that snake. And then after that, we'll get him on its way. Well, I've placed this beautiful pit viper in a tree on the side of the road where he was going. And that goes down as the best snake I've road cruised in Thailand, that's for sure. For me, I think that tops the crate. That's a fantastic snake to see in the wild and I'm really glad I've seen it. Let's leave this one be because it's so easy to spend a lot of time with him. I think this female was actually gravid, meaning she would soon lay a clutch of eggs. So I was glad that I kept the interaction to a minimum and also glad I encountered her instead of another car which may have run her over. Well, we just stopped because we saw an owl and I was looking up at it and trying to get some pictures to no avail. And I just looked and on this fir next to the road, that's the camera's not focusing, sorry. There's a little vine snake, which I would not have seen. So snake number four for the night. And yeah, I would not have seen that without that owl. Snake number four of the night. This is Ahatullah Prasina. Well, we have just got, on the way back, my first ever sunbeam snake, Xenopeltis unicolor. And that is fantastic. I just saw him right on the edge here. I backed the car up uh, and then I spotted him when I came back forward thinking I'd missed him. I spotted him and we managed to get him and extract him from the leaf litter. It's really glossy. I hope this, you can see that iridescence on the back of the snake. Gives it that name, the sunbeam snake. That's fantastic. This is a semi-fossorial snake, so it smushes its way through the leaf litter and stuff, looking for food. And it's just a really cool snake. It's one I really wanted to find and I hadn't seen yet in Southeast Asia. The glean on it is really cool. The glossiness is really cool. And I had actually seen records on this part of the road for these snakes. So it's really cool we've managed to see it. Yeah, I'm really pleased. It's so, I can't explain to you how smooth and glossy this snake feels. It's fantastic. Well, now this snake is actually sitting still, which was surprisingly easy. I thought this would be really hard to take a photograph of. Look at the iridescent sheen on that. You can see why they're called the sunbeam snake. Now, it is great fun finding the rarer and the more venomous snakes, but that is a fantastic snake to find. It is a real unique snake. And so it's a real privilege. Uh, well, that, was, that was the end of my time with him staying still. It was a real privilege to be able to work with him and to see him. But he is going off the wrong side of the road. So I'm just going to put him on the other side because that's the side he was going to. And then we'll say goodbye to the snake. Sunbeam snakes have a varied diet of amphibians, reptiles and mammals. They lay clutches of up to 10 eggs at a time. And I cannot find any scientific basis to this, but I've heard it said multiple times that it's thought sunbeam snakes have a resistance to crate venom. And so out here, probably make up a much smaller proportion of crates diets than other snake species. The final snake of the night I cruised was this blue neck killback, which was actually the rarest snake of the trip. However, heartbreakingly, it had been clipped by a car, 
and so I didn't waste any time filming it, I just took a quick phone picture to record it and then did the right thing by it. Unfortunate to leave the night on such a negative note, but overall I think it was a very successful cruise and I'm glad I went. In hindsight it was silly to spend such a short amount of time in Thailand's deep south considering how far the drive was, but I learned for next time and hopefully you still enjoyed seeing some of my finds. Thanks very much for watching, if you enjoyed this video please subscribe as I'm struggling to get the ball rolling with the reptile content and I'll hopefully see you next time.